I'm in the village of Kilnadima, about six kilometres south of Loch Grey in East Galway, as part of my work with the audit of the Holy Wells of the County of Galway. The aim of the audit is to record as much information as we can on every Holy Well in the county. Today I'm visiting St Dipna's Well, which is associated with healing powers for mental illness. The well is a simple stone enclosed spring fed hollow. Much of the ritual folklore and cures associated with holy wells may date back to pagan times. The water was believed to flow from the other world where the gods lived, bringing with it supernatural powers. On important days in the seasonal calendar, such as Beautana and Lunasa, ceremonies were performed to seek blessings from the gods. Later, as Christianity spread, the wells were often renamed, usually after a local saint, and in some cases churches were built close by. You can see coins which have been thrown into the well in recent years as part of the prayer ritual. Sometimes offerings can be placed on the stone ledges around the edge of a well. Folklore connected to holy wells can be found in the manuscripts collection on the website dukas.ie. Some stories tell of a resident fish, and if a person saw the fish, their prayer would be answered. It was also believed that the water from a holy well could not be boiled, and so it wasn't used for domestic purposes. Next to the well here is a bullion stone. These were very likely originally used as grinding stones for corn or metalworking and they're often found at early Christian monastic sites, such as that here at Kilnadima. The bullon, or bowl, naturally fills with rainwater, which is commonly thought to have healing powers. Local stories often tell us that the hollow in these stones is from the imprint of the saint's knee as he or she knelt to pray. Pilgrims visiting this well tie a rag or some other personal belonging onto the tree here beside the main shrine. The offering represents the illness or sin of the person, or perhaps a friend or a relative that they are praying for. When the rag decays, the pain will be cured or the sin forgiven. On this tree you can see lots of religious objects. such as scapulars and rosary beads, alongside children's toys and clothing. Around the site are various statues and small shrines where votive offerings such as religious medals have been left. Beneath this statue are two large pieces of quartz. These white stones traditionally represent cleansing and spirituality, possibly signifying the cleansing of the soul. Pattern days still survive at some wells, often on the saint's feast day, when the power of the water is believed to be at its strongest. Rounds of the well are made while certain prayers are recited. This prayer asks for Saint Dipna's help for those suffering from nervous and mental disorders. Above is a statue of Saint Dipna carrying a sword in her left hand. Christy Caniff is now going to tell us about her life, why she carries a sword, and why she is associated with curative powers for mental illness. We're here in Kilnandima Catholic Church. Uh, the church itself is built on the site of the early, earlier medieval church. We see an early 20th century stained glass window here, a window probably by the, the Clark studio, although it could be by Harry Clark himself. There are two Saints depicted on the window. One is St. Brendan, 
The other, more importantly here, is St. Dimna. And she's shown here um, with a sword in her hand, very similar to what we've seen on the statue at St. Dimna as well. The sword itself is actually a symbol of martyrdom. And that brings us into the full story of Dimna herself. Um, she's a saint that originated in Oriel, or in the northern counties, in a place called Kildavnish in County Monaghan. She was um, a young lady who gave herself over to the Lord. She took a vow of chastity at the age of 14. Around the same time, her mother, who was a very beautiful lady, a princess, died. And Dimna's father, who was the local uh, petty king of that region, suffered deep depression after that. So he was encouraged by his followers uh, to think about getting married again. But he only wanted somebody that would look like his, his former wife. And the only one that fitted that, if you like, was Dimna herself. So he sought to take Dimna, his own daughter, in marriage. Of course, she had already given herself over to the church. She wasn't having this. And she uh, left um, Monaghan, went to Europe, went to a place called Giel in Belgium. And uh, her father followed her there with his uh, men. He tried to bring Dimna back with him but she resisted and he lost his temper and he chopped off her head with his sword. There's an image of both St. Hypna herself with her head removed and we see a pink disc where her head was and we also then see Gerabrand, her servant, with his head removed and we see a purpley blue disc there but both her heads are shown in the stained glass here uh, to one side. It's this reference to the hedge that she, in a way, gives Dimna her powers as a saint. We've seen that the Holy Wells have a very long history, but they're not just about the past. They're a part of our living heritage. Here at Kilnadima, people come from far and wide to pray to Saint Dimna and to seek solace and hope. If you have stories about your holy well, we would love if you would share them with us. You can do this by sending your photos and information to galwayholywells at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing from you.